So the Department of Home Affairs have made some changes to the GTE requirements. And in this video, we are going to give you a quick update regarding those changes. So without wasting any single minute, let's talk about what are these GTE requirement changes. Now first, before we get into those details, let's understand what is GTE. GTE stands for Genuine Temporary Entrant. It is basically a statement that you will have to write when you are submitting your student visa application. The statement basically proves that you have a genuine intentions to study in Australia. So the Department of Home Affairs assess your application to see if you are genuinely coming to study and not coming to just stay in Australia. So it's very important that you show your genuine intentions when you are completing this statement for your visa application because the visa officer can reject your student visa application if they find that you are not genuinely coming to study here. So let's discuss what is the recent update regarding GTE. So from November 2022 Department of Home Affairs has provided a clear guidelines in regards to the word limits when writing your GTE. In the past, there were no clear guidelines regarding how many words you should write for your GTE statement. However, in the past, when you were completing your GTE statement online, there was a maximum character limit that was 2000 characters. And we have discussed that in our previous video regarding GTE as well. So if you haven't watched that video, please make sure to check that video out as well as we provide you heaps of details regarding GTE in that specific video. But now the Department of Home Affairs has clearly provided this detail that your GTE should not be more than 300 words with a maximum limit of 2000 characters as well. So that 2000 character limit still stays but now the word limit is also there. If you have watched our previous video regarding GTE, I clearly mentioned that the word limit will be around 300 to 500 because of that character limit. So we kind of estimated that but now we have a clear instruction regarding the word limit as well. So what does it mean for international students? So when writing your GTE statement now, you have to make sure that you are as brief as possible covering all the relevant points. So you just can't go on a tangent talking about things here and there. You have to be very, very specific when you're writing your GTE statement now. And I understand that with amount of information you have to cover, it is quite a bit of challenge to finish everything within 300 words, especially if a lot has happened in past few years of your personal life as well but the rule is out there and we have to stick and abide by those rules so the question is how does the Department of Home Affairs assess your GTE statement so Department of Home Affairs actually outlines that they have a four main criteria that they look at when assessing your GTE statement let's look at those four criteria the number one criteria is the situation in your home country so they look at your personal situation in your home country what sort of things you're doing and your family and so on and they also look at what sort of qualification you have studied or currently studying what is your economic situation back in your home country and if there is any political or civil unrest or if there is any military service that you have to do as well the second thing they look at is your potential situation in Australia so they will look at if you have a current ties in Australia that could be your relatives or have some close relationship in Australia how much do you know about the course you're planning to study and the course provider your previous study and the qualification you're planning to study, how you're going to live and how you're going to manage your finances in Australia. The next one is the value of the course to your future. So the department will look into whether your current level of education is matching with what you're planning to study in Australia, whether the course you're planning to study is related to any past or proposed future job roles in your home country and what benefit it will bring in regards to salary or any other benefit it brings for your future in general when you go back to your home country as well. Last but not the least, they look at your immigration history as well. So if you had any previous visa applications for Australia or any other country and if you had any visa refusals or cancellations as well. So these are the four main criteria that they look into when assessing your GTE. Now the question is what should I include in my GTE? A GTE is a very personal statement. You can't just copy paste someone else because everyone's life is different and so as our circumstances in our life as well. There is basically no specific structure of writing the GTE statement but you have to look at what Department of Home Affairs is going to assess you on so you have to cover those details in your GTE statement and again you have to be very concise and to the point when writing these things but if I have to write a GTE statement for myself these are the things
things I will include in that GTE statement. First, I'll talk about myself, my family introduction, and I'll talk about the qualifications I've done or currently doing. Then I'll talk about the course itself, what sort of career outcome it will have, and my education provider, like my university or institute I'm planning to study. Then I'll talk about what value does this course brings to my life. It could include information regarding possible expected salary in my home country or some other career benefit it will bring to my career. Then I will give a reasoning behind why I'm not doing the same course in my home country. It could simply be that that course might not be available in my home country. And why would I prefer to choose Australia in comparison to some other countries for doing this course? The next thing I'll talk about is how I'm going to fund my studies. That could be through my savings or my parents saving or through a sponsorship or through a loan itself. What are going to be my possible living arrangement in Australia? So if I do have any relationships or relatives here in Australia or if I will be living independently on a university campus or somewhere else. Also I'll talk about my previous immigration history if I had any. For example if I had applied for any student visa for Australia or any other country or if I had any visa cancellations or refusals. Last but not the least I'll give a quick update regarding my plans after I arrive in my home country after completing studies in Australia. I know there's a lot of things that I need to cover in order to make sure that I give all the information but if there are some things that are not relevant I'll try to exclude that from my GTE statement. Now there might be some other things that are relevant to your career so you may need to include that in this GTE statement as well. And as I said there are no specific formats but we do have kind of a sample of GTE statement on our website as well so if you want you can download that from the description below. The word limit at the moment is around 500 so you may have to play around and see which things are relevant and which things are not relevant. We will also try to update this sample in the next few coming weeks. So please subscribe to our newsletter because as soon as we do that we'll send it out to our newsletter subscribers. Now last but not the least when you're submitting your GTE statement you may have to stand and attach some documents as well because you'll have to prove some of the things that you're saying in your GTE statement and to do that here are some of the documents that you can attach. So you can attach documents like certificate of attainments or academic transcripts from your university or institution. You can also attach bank statements from the financial institutions that you deal with. Any asset documents like your property documents, your jewelry or any other assets that you might have. Any reference letters or pay slips from your current employers or your previous employers, especially if you're working. Any tax returns that you have done as well in your home country if you were working. And if you're not currently working, you might have a job of a letter from an employer that you might like to attach. If you have any gaps in your studies, especially if it's more than six months, you might have to prove and give an explanation as well why you have such a gap in your studies. If you want to know more about that gap thing, please let us know in the comment section below. We will try to make another video on that gap thing as well. If you're planning to start a business after returning to your home country, then a business plan might be helpful as well. And any other document that you think might be useful for a visa officer when assessing your GTE to prove that you are genuinely coming to study here. Again, the purpose of GTE is not to discourage students who become enough skilled to apply for their PR after studying in Australia but that should not be the intention from the beginning if you are coming here for studies and that is the whole purpose of GTE to filter out the students who may not be genuinely coming to study here. Well I hope this information was useful we try to cover as much information as we can in this video please let me know in the comment section below your thoughts and if you have any other suggestions or ideas or any questions please let us know in the comment section below we'll try to answer as much as we can. And as always, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.